Right, it's a glorious spring day, 25 degrees. All the flowers are out. What better moment to go and thrash the Ostro up and down the local coal. We've got the handlebar camera mount on here. So hopefully we'll get some good shots with that. Got the chest mount I'm gonna put on as well. So let's go and have some fun. I mean, if you come to Mallorca, why would you go and play golf when you can do this instead? It's much more fun. Another thing I was wondering is, if you ride on the white lines, because they're super smooth, how many watts does that save you? And also, the observant amongst you will see that there is a big oily stripe down this road. And I couldn't work out what it was until the other day when I realized, because you have these trails that uh, cut across the road and you can cut down them. And here you can see there's a big rock and what someone's done on their motorbike or car or something has come down here and smashed their sump out, dumped all the oil or most of it, and then carried on down all the way, presumably just in uh, with the engine off in neutral, you would hope. So um, yeah, I thought it was water or diesel, but it's actually oil. So when it rains on here next, you have to be super careful. So here we are on top of the summit of Sacreu, about 420 meters. Very peaceful, hardly anyone ever comes up here. That was Palmer behind me and Calvia is over there. This is the start of the descent. So gonna give it full beans on the descent. Uh, I haven't got the KOM yet, but uh, it's not for want of trying. And today I have dropped the pressure to about 75 PSI in the tires because it's better for descending, a bit more grip. Uh, normally I put about 90 in, I weigh 65 kilos. The got this uh, handlebar mount, see how well that holds. If there's any bumps, it's pretty smooth actually, so should be all right. The famous stem bolts, I've re torqued them up. Hopefully, they will hold for the length of the descent, should be all right. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's give it a go. Hope we don't crash. Here we go. So, let's have some big ring and push a bit hard into the first hairpin. This one's very tight, it's almost a 180. Wide angle, hit the apex, look out, and pedal out. There's a bit of a straight, this is about 5% here. And look ahead, see if the end thing's coming. Looks clear, coming right, there's some goats on the road, fuck. Oi, fucking move it. Uh, I could smell them first. Let them go to shit. They come wide. Come wide again. Cut the apex. It's off camber. I fell here once in the wet. Come around here. Come wide. Looking out the apex. Bit of pedal action. These beds aren't too bad. I watch the stone throw. The ghost like to knock him down. Tight right is flying this one. I'm getting some vibration from the front end. I think the headset is slightly loose again. It's either that or a warp disc. Covering the rear and hard on the front. This is a 180 hairpin, quite wide. Coming fast, brake hard on the front, really hard. Peel it over. Then we've got a bit of a chicane coming up here. Tight right. Full 
180 coming up a little bit of camber and that's the worst of the bend and just pedal hard towards the finish line so while I'm going back up for my next run uh, just a few words on the Ostro um, it's a good bike it's definitely fast um, I still think that the S-Works Tarmac SL6 that I have pips it on handling I can I feel like I can just do a little bit more on the S-Works I, I can't quite work out why that is um, but this is a great bike as soon as you get above 40 kilometers an hour you can you can definitely feel that it wants to go which is a nice uh, it's a nice fun feeling to have and um, the brakes yeah you know I'm getting used to them I really think they add absolutely nothing over dual race direct mount rim brakes in the dry you know I'm always talking about in the dry here all they do really is add a bit of weight and complication to this bike um, you know and if you look at the uh, the rim brakes on something like a Madone how well they've been integrated into the, the shape of the frame they're actually very aero and okay those brakes apparently are not the most powerful in the world but it shows what what can be done and I still think that uh, the rim brake has a place you know unless they can improve the disc brakes if they can uh, next generation of durace whenever it gets out of the Suez Canal might have fantastic disc brakes that push it ahead another step which would be nice in which case you know all bets are off and let's see what happens but I must say for me I don't feel any any real advantage of these discs to be honest <laughs> 